everyone. I don't know who's on. I've never done a live video before. Say hi if you're on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, this is the first time I went live on a video, but I've been praying during this time of panic, and um, God put on my heart to train whoever would like the training on spiritual warfare. I think it's very important right now um, with everything that's going on that you know how to pray. So, we're going to get started in a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Can you see me okay? Can you hear me okay? God. Let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. Uh, I had to chase the twins out of the living room so I could have some quiet to um, share this time with you. Praise God. Let's start with prayer. Father God, I thank you so much that you have this technology that we can communicate with each other during this time, Lord. Right now, I loose your angels to surround the airwaves in the name of Jesus. I bind the enemy off of the airwaves. I loose your hosts to surround everyone who is viewing this. Open their spiritual ears, eyes, and hearts so that they can hear and see what you would have for them. Lord, just let me share what you would want me to share. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, a lot of you know and some of you don't know. Um, six years ago, God had me write this book. Let me see if I can show you it. It's a workbook, Soldiers on the Wall Boot Camp. And right after I had this book published, um, I got very, very sick, very sick. And um, was going to a cancer specialist. Three days before I was to go, I had a woman prophet show up at my front door and said she was praying and God wanted to relay some information to me. And of course, I opened the door and said, praise God, come on in. And um, this woman shared with me that the enemy went before the throne of God and was asking for my life, that he was accusing me of going into his territory and wanted to kill me. And God said, no, that she is one of my generals and an ambassador for me. So his message to me at that time was to not enter into the spiritual warfare, but to wait that I would be healed for his glory. So over the last five years, um, I have not trained on Soldiers on the Wall boot camp. I have not been allowed to enter into spiritual warfare, even though I could see the warfare around me, I could not enter into it. So God always has plans for us that we don't understand. Um, my doctor is not a Christian. And every time I go every six months, I witness to this doctor and I tell him that I'm going to be healed for God's glory. And every time I'm told that there's no cure for this. And I said, you don't know my God. When he says something, he's gonna do it. The entire time I have been stage zero, which means that I have the leukemia, my um, resistance is low, but I do not need treatment. So I'm very careful about going in large crowds that we are to use wisdom and do what God tells us to do. So praise God, um, two visits ago, 
I told the doctor, I said, I'm shocked that this is not normal yet. And didn't know that he was having a bad day. I think he had lost a patient. So he threw down his clipboard and he said, when your God, not if, when your God heals you, I want you to pray for all my patients. And I said, praise God, I'll be ready to pray for your patients. So I am just waiting. I'm only like six counts away from normal on my white blood count. I know it's close because um, several weeks ago, God told me to pick up my sword again. So I know it's very, very close for normal on my blood work. So during this time that we're stuck at home, I just want to share with you and try to teach you from Soldiers on the Wall Boot Camp Workbook. If you have paper and pencil in your Bible, um, I'm going to start sharing with you. I fear I'll do this teaching every day for an hour until we get through the book. It's a very small book. When I teach this in a conference, it's six hours teaching. Um, I like the interactive um, teaching. So if you have a question, just text it in and I'll try to pause and answer your questions. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to, this is a saying that I, is in the very beginning of the book. And it says, no one has figured out how to manage people in battle. They must be led. This book was originally written to teach um, prayer groups and churches how to form and how to intercede while your pastors are preaching because they're open for attack while they're preaching. But you can use everything in this book personally in your home, um, in your businesses. It's all the same principles. And this saying, talk to me, because when you're doing spiritual warfare, you must be led by the Holy Spirit. It's only by Jesus' name that the enemy will flee. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to skip over some of the parts. I'm trying to be led by God exactly what um, you need to know today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This goes into the introduction of the book. But I, I, I'm being led by God to share this with you. Several weeks ago, and I have posted on my Facebook page, when I have visions, I always post them. Because it's not for just me, it's for everyone. I've had visions of my sword many years ago. I saw my sword upgraded to a gold sword with jewels in the handle. So I know I was progressing in God's army. Um, when God told me I could pick up my sword again, it was the same sword. And recently during prayer, I saw my shield. And I think it represents everyone's shield. The shield of God, the armor of God is our faith. And this shield was shining so bright brighter than God's glory when I see God's glory. It was almost radiating. And I saw myself standing there and I was holding the shield of faith and I had the sword, the word of God in my hand. And I saw the enemy advancing and I started like tapping the front of the shield like an intimidation tactic um, you would see um, soldiers do. And why I'm seeing this, I'm thinking, Lord, the enemy's advancing. When the enemy got very close, God had me to take the word of God and hit it hard against the shield, the faith. And when that happens, there is an explosion in the spirit realm. It was like a blue white light, like lightning going off and the enemy fell back. I hadn't even spoken the word of God but I was prepared with the word of God and my faith. And that's all it took. We don't realize what faith and the word of God combined, what happens in the spirit realm. It's, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. I was amazed when I saw this. So saying that, what I would like to do is I'm gonna skip around in this book. And um, I think it's important Number one, that you know 
what the pieces of the armor of God are and what they represent. Thank you, Lord. If you have your book, you can, I'll tell you what chapter I'm going to. I'm going to skip to chapter 17, and we're going to talk about the sword. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Page 95 of your book, if you have it. I'm going to talk about the defensive weaponry and the armor of God. And I have this little statue here. I don't know if you can see it. It shows the pieces of the armor of God. Can you see that? Thank you, Lord. We're going to talk about the sword. The sword is the word of God. We already have discussed the sword, how important the word of God is in every spiritual battle. That's the only thing that will defeat the enemy. And the enemy knows the word of God. He likes to twist it. That's why you need to read your Bible and hide the word in your heart. I'm not one that is very good at memorizing anything. But it is amazing that when you're in spiritual warfare prayer, the Holy Spirit will bring up scriptures that you've hidden in your heart. Thank you, Lord. The shield of faith is the next thing right here. I don't know if you can see it. That's what I just talked about. That blocks every arrow that is thrown at us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just, I'm, God is just telling me to quit looking at the workbook and just tell what he wants me to say to you at this point. Right now, I would like to pray the armor of God on everyone who is online right now. Just close your eyes and let me pray the armor of God on you. Father God, I thank you right now that you are putting the helmet of salvation to cover our thoughts and our brains. In the name of Jesus, just take your hands and put it right on your head. Doesn't matter, just... Put the helmet of salvation on your head right now as we're speaking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, right now we just apply the breastplate of righteousness, your holiness, that protects all of our vital organs. I thank you right now, Lord, that on the Roman soldiers that crisscrossed in the back, if you can see it, First crosses in the back, which always spoke to me about the stripes that Jesus took for us, that his holiness, his righteousness protects our heart, our lungs, our vital organs. Thank you, Lord. The belt of truth. He is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And the belt goes around our waist to stabilize us. It also holds the other weaponry is our belt. It holds our sword. It holds the um, breastplate of righteousness in place. Thank you, Lord. And he is the truth. The gospel of peace is on our feet. He doesn't want us to keep our faith to ourselves. He wants us to run the race he's put before us. He wants us to Tell other people the hope that we have in him. It's a gospel of peace. And in this time of spirit of fear is attacking everyone in their homes, you have peace in you that you can speak to your family and your friends. Thank you, Lord. The shield of faith we've already talked about, it blocks every fiery dart. Your faith in God, your faith in his word, to know that anything we're fearing, God, there's nothing impossible for him. He can block it. Our sword, which is the word of God, it is sharper than a two-edged sword. It can divide the soul and spirit. Thank you, Lord. It is that sharp. I pray the armor of God every day before I get out of bed. And I just started adding to my prayer and I asked for God to give me grace, enough grace for the day to get through the grace 
and mercy and peace to get through each day. So thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The most important thing before we even go any further in this spiritual warfare, I already mentioned to you that it's only Jesus that can stop any demonic. You are not, I am not any match for a demonic. Jesus has already defeated the enemy. So right now, if you have never prayed and been for real and given your life to Jesus, I would ask that you do it now. I grew up and going to church every Sunday. My dad, he would drop the six of us kids off at church. And I, I went through um, confirmation. I did everything that the church required. It, it was all, it wasn't anything in my spirit that I was taking in. And when we bought this house here, there was um, a problem spiritually in this house. And for a year, I went through being terrified in my own house. Finally, I turned on the 700 Club and prayed with them for salvation. And I promised God that he, if he would help me and get this thing out of my house, that I would never turn from him again in the bad times and the good times. Before, I only went to church when something was going wrong. And I wanted the pastor to pray because I didn't know how to pray. I just had the Lord's Prayer memorized, different prayers that we said in church growing up I had memorized, but I didn't have anything from my heart that I could speak directly. I didn't think I could do that. So praise God. You have to be for real. You, you have to ask Jesus into your life. He doesn't come. He's a gentleman. He doesn't push his way into your life. I can look back my whole life that um, God was always there protecting me. I was seeing in the spirit realm as a small child. Didn't even know what I was seeing, but I was seeing um, just so many things that God knows what it's going to take for you to pray for salvation. So right now, I'm going to pray, and you can pray with me. If you've never prayed this prayer, go ahead and pray it now. Father God, I know that I am a sinner, and I am sorry. I believe, Jesus, you went to that cross for me, that you took every sin, all my sins on you, past, present, and for it. I believe on the third day that you rose from the grave, that you have victory over death. And through you, Jesus, a free gift, I can spend eternity with you. And I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit, you didn't leave us as an orphan. You sent the Holy Spirit to live inside every one of your children. So I thank you right now. I thank you that you are going to be my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. I give you my life, and I turn away from sin. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you prayed that prayer or you know one of your family members that need to pray that prayer, I do have a few of these other little workbooks that I made up. Can you see it? And it says, now what? I prayed for salvation. What did I commit to? It's very small booklet. I have a few of these. You can message me and I would mail it to you or you can get this or the Soldiers on the Wall, Boot Camp Workbook. All of those are available on Amazon. Um, so praise God if you just prayed that prayer. Welcome. You're one of my sisters and brothers now in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Years ago at ECC, I was asked to take over the prayer ministry to restructure it and what I warn people if you're asked to do that go to the previous leaders of the prayer ministry and make sure that they're okay to step down and that they're okay with restructuring because you don't want to start restructuring and have the enemy jump in there with hard feelings gossiping um, you don't want it 
but this is what I believe God is doing, why he wants us to have prayer ministries. If you have your Bible, turn to Isaiah 54, verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe God is expanding our prayer ministries. I believe this is a time that God wants us to seek his face, that we've become too busy to have that close relationship with God. So he slowed everyone down. Did God send this? No, I believe the enemy has sent it, but God can use anything for his glory. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 54, 2, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your curtains wise. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Time is short. We have to pray. We have to hold the spiritual walls so that as many people as possible can be saved. Lives are at stake. I don't want anyone's blood on my hand. When I first prayed um, to have a ministry, and I was asked in a prayer group, do you want a ministry for God? I kind of hesitated. And it just came to me. I was always a party girl, always the funny one. And I thought, if I can just be crazy and foolish before salvation, why not be foolish to people as a ministry? It's good to laugh. Um, so I, when I meet someone, I assume they're not saved. I don't assume they're saved. I went to church my entire life. And I wasn't saved. I knew who Jesus was. But I never gave him my life. And there is a difference. You must be born again. Satan knows the name of Jesus. He knows who Jesus is. Just because you know the name does not mean you're saved. You have to pray and ask him into your life. Give your life to him. Thank you, Lord. My purpose is to train warriors in spiritual warfare to reproduce what I've learned. Do I know it all? No, I don't know it all. But I know quite a bit from being con almost constantly in spiritual warfare. So thank you, Lord. When I say I have seen something, I've either seen it with my eyes wide open or I see it as soon as I close my eyes. It's like turning on a TV. I'm watching a colored TV. It's not black. It's not white. It's watching like watching a movie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I want to stay focused on spiritual warfare and distinguishing who the spiritual enemy really is. There are so many various demonic groups functioning today in which Satan is their God. However, we're going to focus on the bigger enemy, the powers and principalities that they take direction from. God says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. So we're going to focus on that. I'm not going to get into um, personal deliverance, even though that is part of spiritual warfare. For this purpose, I'm going to focus and try to train you who the enemy actually is. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I asked God my usual question, why? He impressed on me that this ministry was to be called Soldiers on the Wall and that I was to train warriors into elite soldiers. Thank you, Lord. Kind of like Navy SEALs. Thank you, Lord. So at that time, I asked him for an assistant and he gave me a lifelong friend and that person acted like Aaron with Moses. I asked God for an armor bearer who would stand with the troops and have my back in prayer. Thank you, Lord. This is what God told me to say out loud, and it would go into the spirit realm. It's a call, a call to you. Report for duty. 
No more a wall. No more sitting back and letting someone else stand on the wall and do the warfare. You're to report for duty. I spoke it and I wrote it and I heard the cry of the Spirit. I pray that you will form or regroup prayer partners into a soldiers on the wall ministry and you too will begin to storm the heavens while your church is holding service. Expect resistance from the enemy and forming any prayer group. He doesn't want anyone to pray and he definitely doesn't want anyone to be saved. Thank you, Lord. So be warned. This is not a game. This is war and you are in God's army. Before going any further into this book, let's pray. And you pray right after me. I'll pause so that you can repeat it. Father, I have heard your call. Train me in the unseen war that I may serve as a soldier on the wall for your glory. Open my spiritual ears, eyes, and heart to be effective. It is written, whatever I bind on earth will be bound in the heavenlies. And whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in the heavenlies. I bind any power or principality that would try to come against me while training in the name of Jesus. I loose God's angels to surround me. By and through Jesus, I pray, amen. At the end of each chapter or on your paper, there's a section that says notes. I'd like you to write down. I don't want you to write everything down. I want you to write down what speaks to your spirit, what is important to you. Thank you, Lord. All battles are different, so your battle strategy may be different from mine. Pray and ask God, what is your strategy? Get a highlighter out and make notes in this training book. If you have the training book or on your paper, highlight um, scriptures or words so that you can go back and pray about them. If you seek God, you will find him. This is just some building blocks so that you can use it to restructure or start your individual prayer ministries. Build it the way God tells you. I pray you get some useful material out of this book and then building your prayer wall. All scriptures I reference can be found in the NIV or the American Standard Versions of the Bible unless otherwise noted. And definitions have been taken from the Strong's Hebrew Greek Dictionary. You want to write that down. Strong's, S-T-R-O-N-G, apostrophe S, Hebrew slash Greek Dictionary. And you can find the that dictionary online. You may have a Bible that has that in the back of it. You can find all Bibles online, and they're free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All soldiers have a mission and a purpose for battle. As a spiritual soldier, your mission is, and write this down, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel Chapter 22, verse 30. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. 
I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourself no rest. You will stand in the spiritual gap and hold the spiritual ground during your church service. You will be a soldier on the wall. You stand in the gap now for your family and friends during this pandemic. You stand in that gap. God is counting on us to be a body here on earth, to build up and hold the spiritual wall. This wall is made up of prayers and we are here to defend it. You will learn how to do so. Notice in Isaiah, that we are told to never be silent. We must speak the word. The enemy cannot read our minds. Say that again, say it out loud. The enemy cannot read my mind. Write it down. The enemy cannot read my mind. We must speak the word out loud. We cannot rest while on duty. We are to be ready instantly when called to prayer. The general for your troop of soldiers is your pastor. He's the general, he's directing. We always answer to God first and then to the pastor. You must trust your pastor and take direction from the leader that he or she appoints to lead your soldiers on the wall. Not everyone can be the general if you're in a prayer group situation. If you're home and you're interceding as we are all home, you are the general. And you are taking your direction from the Holy Spirit on how to pray. Thank you, Lord. On August 2011, I saw a vision, and this is what the Lord told me. Tell my people, time is short. I then saw the Antichrist was on his way, and he will come into the public arena. We don't have time to play at war anymore. The enemy knows his time is short. We need to give as many people as possible the opportunity to pray for salvation. We must hold the spiritual wall and take ground away from the enemy through prayer. The Lord impressed upon me as I was praying that I should accept the restructuring of the intercessory prayer group to put out the call. God is calling his soldiers to report for duty. No more laziness, no more AWOL. You're to stand and pray, to intercede. The response in the spirit realm is why you purchase the book or you're listening today. Time for boot camp. Are you ready? If you're ready, write in the comments. Yes, I am ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know your mission. So now, what are your assignments, your orders? Here are a few if you're in a church setting. You pray for the protection of your pastor as he or she is used to bring forth God's word. You intercede on behalf of the lost and or sick that the Lord will be sending into your church or are in your home right now. You stand alert while on duty and you watch for any advancement of the enemy. You watch over the members of your church family. You will be a highly trained soldier in the mighty victorious army of God. The enemy will always try to take out the pastor because he or she is bringing forth the life changing gospel of Jesus Christ. If you hear or see something happening to the pastor, pray immediately for his or her protection. Here are a few examples that you can see and hear. You don't have to see in the spirit realm. Your natural senses can alert you something's going on. He or she 
may start to lose their voice. He or she will lose their place while reading. He or she will lose their train of thought. They may appear to lose physical strength. The sound system may suddenly go crazy and start squealing. The electronics stop functioning. These are clues. Your pastor is under attack. Pray immediately. You don't have to see in the spirit to recognize an attack. God has given us eyes to see and ears to hear. Use your weapons and fight. We will go over some of the weapons available to a soldier on the wall. These, this, like I said, this workbook was designed for to design prayer groups in your church. But everything in here you can use personally in your home. You can use by watching the news. You, you see these things. You don't have to be in the room when an attack's going on. It's the spirit realm. So as soon as you pray, you can bind the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Pray for the unsaved and sick people that the Lord will lead to your church. Pray for protection, that they can hear the word of God without distraction. Pray that their hearts are softened. Pray that their spiritual eyes are open. Pray the word. If you've been in church, I know you noticed this. As soon as the service is closing and there is going to be prayer, all kind of distractions start. People start moving, um, shutting doors, leaving, trying to get to the doors to do ministry. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing more important than when a pastor is doing an altar call or praying. You should be sitting still and praying at that point. Praying, praying, praying for anyone in your sanctuary that is not saved, that they would be saved in the name of Jesus. Pray that they're not distracted, that they can hear. Thank you, Lord. When you see soldiers on guard, they are not in a casual posture. They stand alert and watch for anything unusual on the horizon. Your church may have a very valuable tool available to you, which are security cameras. If you do not have this technology, use your eyes and ears by having someone in the sanctuary Another person walking the halls, watching, and two praying where you have designated the prayer wall. This is important. Sunday school or children's church going on, there can be attacks in those classrooms. And if you have the security cameras, you can watch and you can pray immediately. If you see a child being up, start to get upset, you can pray for God's peace over that child. Thank you, Lord. These are valuable tools. When we didn't have um, cameras, I'd have myself or someone sit on the back row of the church and watch the sanctuary. If I saw that the enemy was starting to stir in the sanctuary, I would pray, but I would immediately go to the wall where two or three of us are gathered. He's in our midst. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your prayer wall could be wherever the monitor is located so that you can see the entire church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where we talk about that. Thank you, Lord. If you have one of your soldiers who has the gift of discerning spirits, that is a person that I would want in the sanctuary that they can watch over and have that gift. It's a spiritual gift, gift of discernment. We are one body with many gifts. Use the body correctly. You're not going to ask the hands to walk. You're going to ask the feet to walk. So use the body. Ask God where each soldier should be positioned. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you're on the prayer wall, I cannot st stress this enough. This is not time for gossip. This is not time for speculation. This is you should have paper and your Bible, and you should be interceding whatever scriptures God has given you. 
you are to intercede. And if while you're praying, you could just be there praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. If God gives someone a scripture, write it down. So the next person who is coming on the wall can see the verses, how God is using the sword during these services. Everyone is important. Everyone is part of the body, working as one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be thinking that the enemy cannot come into the presence of God. Not true. Read the book of Job. The enemy goes before the throne of God to accuse us. He knows we are praying and he is testing the wall for a weakness. It could be someone was sent by the enemy to pray against your service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are called as God's warrior, but now you need to move into the realm of becoming God's elite soldier. And like all soldiers, you need boot camp. You may be a good soldier already, but you can always find a nugget of truth from someone else. You can do this. Nothing is impossible for God. And at this point, um, thank you, Lord. We've already went through two chapters, so I'm going to stop on chapter three. But what I like to do right now is... God has told me repeatedly, and I have been praying this every day, to pray Psalm 91 over your family. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 91, please. Or if you have a phone or something, you can look up Psalm 91. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can just read the psalm. But I'm going to teach you right now how to pray Psalm 91 over your family using myself and my family. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 91. Thank you, Lord. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you, Lord, that me and my family... We are in the secret place of the Most High. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we will trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers, and under his wings we shall take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You and your family shall not have fear at night when you try to sleep. We are not afraid of the arrow that flies by day that is called COVID-19. Nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you or your family. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you and your family have made the Lord, who is our refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you or your family, nor shall any plague come near you or your home. For he shall give his angels charge over you and your family to keep you and your family in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you and your family up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You and your family shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because... He has set his love upon me. 
because you have loved him. You and your family have loved him. Therefore, I will deliver you and your family. Thank you, Lord. I will set you and your family on high because he, you, have known my name. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and your family. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and your family and honor you. With a long life, I will satisfy you and your family and show you my salvation. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 91. Pray this over you, your family, your friends, every day. God has been, this is a word that God has me using every day during this spiritual attack. And it is a spiritual attack, what is going on. It did not come from God. It is from the enemy. But there is nothing impossible for God. And he says repeatedly, fear not. Fear not, say out loud, fear not, fear not, fear not. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. These are unusual times, but there's nothing impossible for God. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Just keep reminding yourself. The God that made everything lives inside you, lives inside you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. Fear not. Does that mean that we're to act ignorant and go out? No, we're not to act. We're to use wisdom during these times. We're to obey the laws during this time. But we're also, we can have peace that passes understanding We're to pray. We're to read our Bible. Draw close to God during this time. I'm going to pray right now and close out this session, but tomorrow I'll teach for another hour and continue in the Soldiers on the Wall boot camp training. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for those who have joined in. Lord, I ask that you just seal the word in their heart. I bind that spirit of fear that is attacking in the name of Jesus. I speak your peace over everyone who is listening. I give your angels charge over them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that they will have everything, that you will provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We don't have to be afraid. We have a spirit of power. I bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love you all, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.